I have been commissioned to make a moth poncho. Yes, I make ponchos, just normal, normal ponchos with the hood and the little pocket and they're cozy and flowy and awesome. And my friend reached out and said, hey, can you make this look like a moth? Because that would be really rad. And I said, heck yeah. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I don't know if I can do that, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. And however long it takes me to do this, we're starting it today and we'll see how it goes. So I'm taking you along with me and we're just gonna jump right in and, and wing it. I have an idea, I have like a, a little plan. I'll show you my plan. I sketched out a rough idea and then we're just gonna do it. And it should work out, right? That's how everything works out. You just kind of do it and, and it's it's always great. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, well, come come along, come along with me. We're gonna, we're gonna sew a moth poncho. So here is my plan. This is like the overhead view of like, if you spread it out and laid it on the ground, what it should look like. And then uh, we're gonna have little antennae, hopefully on the hood. And then this guy is like as if you were wearing it and you had your wings spread. That's kind of the look that I would like it to have. Here's the fabric that I'm gonna use. They're all flannel. I did pre-wash them and that's why there's a lot of fuzz and lint on the black, but I'll make sure to take care of that. Um, basically, the request was for purples and teals, and I'm gonna add some black in there. I was originally gonna line it with black, but then I found this, and I thought, oh my god, that's perfect, because we've got purple and teal blue little mothy boys on there. So I figured, why not have a fun little lining, and if I can, I'll make it reversible. So to start out, I folded my fabric into four layers and then I also folded my design into fourths. That way I only have to draw out one pattern and then I can copy that for the rest of the wings. So I used a coordinate method. Since my drawing was to scale, I was able to measure out exactly where the coordinates should be. That way I can map it out based on my design. I then cut out the neck hole. I used the neck hole template from my original poncho design to get the right shape. And then I clipped all my layers together so that nothing would scooch around. I then start connecting the dots and using my intuition and eyeball kind of what I would like the wings to look like. I'll have a bigger wing on the outer part where your arm would be and then in the center will be a smaller wing. So using the coordinate dots that I made scaling up my original design, I connected those and got this nice wing shape. Now that I've got the overall shape that I want the poncho to be, I'm going to need to make a paper pattern so I can draw out the rest of the smaller details. So the way that I do this is I take paper grocery bags, I open them up and tape them together. It's a free way to get a nice big piece of paper, and I don't recommend using masking tape. Definitely use uh, like a packing tape or something. Uh, over time, the masking tape peeled up off of the paper and it became a bit of a struggle later on down the line. So take my advice and if you're going to do this, just use uh, packing tape instead of masking tape. So once I had a big enough piece of paper, I clipped that to my fabric. And since I had already mapped out the general shape that I wanted on my fabric, instead of redoing all of the math and mapping it out, I just folded my paper to match the curves of the wings. And then once I have the curve folded into my paper, I go in with a Sharpie and then I'm able to draw that line on so I know exactly where to cut. So now I am 
planning out the rest of the design onto my pattern. So for this, I'm starting with chalk because I knew roughly where I wanted it, and then once I got it exactly where I wanted it, then I would go back with a sharpie. That way I don't have a bunch of sharpie marks on my pattern that aren't actually going to be in the finished result. So I used my chalk, and then you'll see here in a minute, once I got it where I liked it, I'm just going over them with the sharpie. And to get this design, I, since my drawing was to scale, I used the coordinate method in addition to just eyeballing it to make sure it looked right once it was scaled up. And then for details like this outer edge, I knew I wanted it to be about an inch of a strip of fabric cut out in the end. So I just went ahead and measured directly from the edge uh, about an inch. That way I could just kind of sketch it directly on. So next, I want to add stitches down the middle of the wing for additional design. So I thought I could just get away with folding it and those lines would be nice and even and beautiful. Well, that was a great idea in theory, however, once I found circles to trace, for the circle design, I realized I didn't have enough space the way it was folded, so I'm just kind of eyeballing what I think would look good, and once I've got the lines exactly how I like them, then I trace them with the sharpie. So there was no real rhyme or reason to this, I just used my intuition and made it look good. <laughs> so it's a bit confusing because now there's a bunch of folds in my paper. but. That's where the sharpie comes in. Once you've got your spot that you like, uh, trace it with the sharpie and then you know that's the one that you're, you're gonna follow once you're cutting out your pieces. So again, we're back to eyeballing. I laid down my circles and I said, that looks great and just traced them out. And so now I've got the circles in there and moving on to the smaller wing. This I just kind of measured off of the bigger wing and just kind of mapped out what I thought looked good. So I don't really have a, a rhyme or reason to this part, but it's, I'll just let you watch what I'm doing because it's a little bit easier than me trying to babble and explain to you what I did. And you'll notice in my original design that I had a single circle on the smaller wing. Well, as I was mapping it out in full scale, I thought that might not look the most aesthetically pleasing in the final result. So I decided to just do three circles to mimic the same circles that I've got on the bigger wing. And I first did them in chalk, looked in a mirror, thought it looked nice, so I went ahead and traced that with a sharpie. And then now I'm adding the detail in the edge of the wing. That I was able to just fold it and get a nice even space. And since I didn't have any circles to stick in between the folds, uh, just using a nice even space with this fold technique worked out really well. So I did that for the smaller wing as well. And then once I had the lines there from the folds, I traced them with Sharpie. And now I've got a full complete quarter pattern of this wing design. So now that I've completed that, I need to make a copy of it because I need one that I can keep whole and I need one that I can cut apart and make patterns of all my little pieces that I need. So I taped together bags, I traced the outline, and then the way that I went about copying this pattern since I needed to cut one apart anyway, I started cutting off pieces and then I traced where that piece was. So as you can see here, I'm cutting this piece off and then I'll go in with a Sharpie and then just trace where it was. That way, when I'm done cutting apart the original pattern piece, 
I'll be left with one cut up into all the pieces that I need and then the one that I traced will be a full complete copy of the original design. Once I've got the big wing completed, I moved on to the small wing part and did the same exact thing. I cut off a piece, set that to the side, traced it, and then cut off the rest of the pieces and completed it until I had a full piece. And then for the small pieces, I went through and taped them up. That way they're a little bit stronger for when I go to actually use them as pattern pieces. They won't just get ripped and messed up. So as you can see here, I've got a big wing that is my full design, and then I'm just replacing all the pieces that I cut up and taped just to make sure I've got everything that I need and it all lines up as it should. So now that I've got my wing pattern pieces complete, I'm moving on to the hood. So. I knew I wanted the hood to be oversized, so I just took my original poncho hood design and copied it, but when I traced it, I just added a few inches to make it bigger. And then I added this squiggly detail in the front, and then I added this in the back to kind of give an accent piece. I ended up hating it, so I, uh, yeah, I'll get to that after, but um, basically what you see here is I cut out another piece, cause I'll need a whole piece, and then just like the wing, I'm going to need one that is cut up as well. So I cut off the squiggly bit in the front, and I cut off this accent piece in the back that I ended up just taping right back on, because as I was trying to do a mock-up, I hated that. So we're just going to omit that weird little slice in the back completely and pretend it never happened. So the slice was ugly, so we're taping it back on, ignoring that it happened. And then uh, the squiggly detail in the front, you can see on the left there, that's my mock-up piece. I liked that. I liked the way that looked. So uh, we're going to, we're rolling with that. And then since I taped that piece on, I'm just matching it up to the big one, the original, not the big one, but the... Uh, <laughs> the full pattern piece. I'm matching it up to make sure everything lines up. And then you can see me writing details here. Uh, anytime I make a pattern and I need to remember something, uh, like for example, I'm going to be overlapping those two dotted line sections, so I need to make sure I cut extra fabric seam allowance for that. So made my notes, and then we're moving on to the inner lining pattern piece. So you see me taping together my bags again. I taped together four whole bags because I need to do a full wing instead of the quarter wing that I was working with. I'm now doing a full wing. That way I can just cut out one big piece. Once I measured my lining fabric that I got, I realized I was about a probably about a quarter to a half of a yard short to just cut one big piece, right? So I was just gonna, you know, go to the fabric store, get more fabric. Well, I, you're watching me now about four months into the project. I worked on it a little bit here and there over the last few months and they no longer have that lining moth fabric in store. So I'm improvising. I've got black, so what I'm going to do is splice little triangles of black in between triangles of the moth fabric. This will make more sense once you actually see how it comes together uh, with the actual fabric pieces, but basically the way I'm attacking this, after a lot of thought, I want the majority to be the moth, and these little slivers to be the black. 
So, I measured the center and then two inches out. So it was about four inches wide at the bottom and I tapered them all up to the top. <laughs> so I'm using my fold technique to get the center of the wing on this side. And then once I've got my center mark, I'll measure four inches across, so two on either side, and then just connect a straight line. And then to make it look a little bit softer and more intentional, I'm sloping the corners so that it's not just a harsh cutoff. It'll kind of uh, blend like wings should. <laughs> so this was a bit of an improv Im improvision to my original design, I was hoping I could just use just a full, nice, one solid piece of lining fabric, but uh, it got a lot complicated, a lot more complicated than that. But it's fine, it turned out really cool in the end. So I'm excited to show you the end, but here we are doing the pattern. Now, before I cut all my pieces apart, I'm labeling them. I'm so glad you can see I cut a little bit. I caught myself and said, I need to label these, otherwise I'll cut them out and have no idea what goes where. So I wrote what they were and I gave them a number and this saved my entire project in the end. So if you ever have a complicated pattern, give it a number or some sort of system so you know what's what. So once everything is numbered, I'm now cutting them all apart because the skinny boys will be black and then the big old pieces will be the moth fabric. And to strengthen the tips of these skinny little pieces, I am taping them. And as you can see, as I warned you not to use masking tape, I have switched over to packing tape and it has been fabulous and worked way better than the masking tape ever did. So. Get some packing tape, tape the tiny pieces of your patterns, and you will be good as gold. Here you will see me tracing and cutting out all of my pattern pieces. This blue fabric I have folded in half, that way when I cut it out I'll be able to open it up into one big wing piece. I will be cutting out two of these, one for the front and one for the back. Once I have those pieces cut out, I will now move on to cutting out all of the accent pieces for this design. So I've got the blue fabric as my base, and now I'm using this purple fabric as a contrast for the design pieces. So I'm cutting out all of the strips, and since my pattern was only a quarter of my full design, I had to multiply these pieces by four in order to make sure that I had enough for the full project. Next, I traced out and cut out all of the circles that I'll need. Once I had all of my accent pieces cut out, I laid them down on my pattern piece just to make sure that everything was lining up as it should and that I had all the pieces that I needed.
Once that looked good, I stretched out my fabric and laid down the accent pieces and I adjusted them, made sure that they were exactly where I wanted them to be and then pinned them in place. I started with the biggest pieces first and worked in from there. I used my pattern pieces in order to help me line things up a little bit better. Again, keep in mind, I'm only showing you one half of what I'm doing for everything. So since this is only the front side of my poncho, I did this exact same thing again to get an identical piece for the back. Once I have those pieces secured, I'm now using my pattern piece to mark the top and the bottom of the lines that I want down the center of the wings. So instead of cutting out fabric pieces for this part of the design, I decided I was just going to stitch lines down with black thread. So I am marking the lines out in chalk and I will just trace over them with my sewing machine to get this part of the design. Once I've got all my lines drawn, I laid down the circles and adjusted them to where I thought looked good. Once I got them where I wanted them, I pinned them in place. Moving on to my hood pieces. So this is the outer part of the hood. I cut the main piece out in blue and then the squiggly bit for the front, I'm cutting that out in purple. I made sure to add a little bit of extra fabric along the squiggly line part. That way when I overlap the two pieces, I've got room to stitch them together so that nothing's falling apart. Once I lined them up where I wanted them, I pinned them in place. I am now moving on to the inner lining pattern pieces. So for the hood, I knew that I wanted a solid piece of this moth fabric. So I went ahead and folded the fabric in half and just cut out one big piece for the hood pieces. As for the inner lining, these pieces, I also needed two of every piece. So I folded my fabric in half and then traced it out pinned it together, and then labeled it with the corresponding number so that nothing got confused. I scooched my fabric up and repeated that process for the other two pattern pieces. And once I had everything traced out, I went ahead and cut them out, making sure to flip over my pieces and label the back side too. Since I've got these pinned together, if I were to separate the pieces, I didn't want to mix them up, so I made sure to label the corresponding numbers on the front and the back of all the pieces that I was cutting out. Next, we're moving on to the black triangular pieces that will be spliced between the moth fabric for the lining. As I explained in part one, unfortunately I found out I did not have enough of the moth fabric to just do one big solid lining piece. And by the time I needed more, it was no longer sold in store. So I came up with this plan to splice black between the moth. That way it all was nice and even and cohesive. So, since I need two of all of these pieces as well, I folded my fabric in half, pinned them together, and then made sure to label both the front and the back of the pieces. For my pocket, I decided to use my original poncho pocket pattern piece, and I just cut that out of black, 
And in order to avoid it being just a big blob of black, I wanted to tessellate these little moth pieces to break it up because I felt if I just had one big solid black pocket piece, it would it wouldn't it would throw off it would be very distracting and it would throw off the whole look. So I cut out multiple moths and then moved them all around, figured out what I liked. And I ended up just going with these three. I thought they looked very nice. I made sure everything was nice and even. Once I got them in the spot I liked, I pinned them and I end up stitching around the outside of the moths to hold them on. So now that we've got all of our pieces, now comes the daunting task of me pinning together all of these pieces. So even though I had them labeled with the numbers, um, things did get a little bit mixed up and it took a lot of uh, pinning some pieces, unpinning, switching them around, <laughs> figuring out what was supposed to, to look good and match up. Um, what, what tripped me up was because I cut all the pieces out together with the fabric folded in half, I had to reverse all of the pieces for the other side and assemble them in reverse number order. Long story short, it was a little tricky. I ended up getting it in the end, so that was really cool. I used my pattern pieces to make sure that everything was lining up accordingly. Since I cut the black pieces a little bit wider to compensate for the overlap, um, I used the pattern pieces then when assembling to make sure that I had just the right amount of spacing between all my pieces. That way when I go to attach the lining to the outer bit, everything lines up and works out for me. So it took a lot of adjusting, but we got there. And that's the important part, just persevere. You can use this lesson in all parts of life. If you're struggling, keep going, keep pushing. You'll get there in the end. Just believe in yourself. <laughs> I am now stitching together all of my pieces and putting them all together. For this project, I decided to leave the edges raw instead of rolling them. That way it's not bulky where all of the pieces are joined together. And also as it's washed and worn, the edges will kind of get fluffy and frayed. And I think it will add a little bit of uh, magic to this whole moth look that we're going for. So I pinned down the top where I'm going to stitch tried it on and made sure I'm not pinning too far down. That way when it's being worn, it hits your arm at the right spot. I pinned down the same length on the other side and now I'm moving on to the hood pieces. I stitched on the squiggly bits and then I'm laying right sides together and then I will be serging and top stitching down the center fold of the hood. So I didn't record much about these antenna. I'm sorry, I should have. However, um, I just played around with the stitches on my machine. I found one that looked like little hairs, made this little shape, and I stuffed it with polyfill. And then I copied it to make a second one, and voila. Um, I did use pinking shears and then uh, fabric glue on the edges so that it didn't fray and fall apart. So if you want more information about that, let me know in the comments. I would be happy to explain further or uh, if you need video of that in the future, I would be happy to, to go into detail about stuff like this. Anyway, I tried the hood on, measured where I like the pieces to sit, the antenna to sit, and then I stitched them on. Now I am attaching the hood 
to the body piece of the poncho. To do this, I lined up the center seam of the hood with the center seam of the back of the poncho and then just lined everything up from there until everything was attached in the right spots. And then I now have a completed outer shell of my moth poncho. And now for the lining. So I stitched together all of these pieces and then I put right sides together. Since this is the lining, the part where I'm stitching here along the sleeve will not be a raw hem. So right sides together for this and then I pinned it in place. And then using the shell, I lined it up so that I could make sure that I'm only stitching down exactly where I need to to be. That way when I put these pieces together, I don't have anything that's uh, overstitched or understitched. I folded it in half to make sure that I've got the, the same length on both sides. And then I used my pattern piece. Since I cut the black pieces bigger than they should have been originally, I just traced there to see exactly where I needed to stitch and cut off the excess so that everything lined up. I folded it up, cut out the neck hole, and flipped it right sides out. I forgot to record me stitching together the hood, but it's just two pieces that I, I stitched and serged. Um, and then I'm doing the same thing to attach the hood with the body piece here. We're lining right sides together. I lined up the center seam of the hood with the center seam of the body piece, and then I'm just pinning along the edges. And I was going to do this wrap neck detail, but since it's reversible, that didn't work out. So I'm lining it up with the outer shell to see how much I cut off. And then I'll be trimming the extra fabric that I didn't need. Making sure they both are the same size. And then now that I've got that stitched on, we get to put on the pocket. I measured down how far I wanted the pocket to sit, and then I rolled over the edges and pinned it in place, and then I'll be stitching around these, except for the diagonal lines, so that's where you'll be able to put your little hands in. I lint rolled it and flipped it inside out, and now it's time to put the two pieces together. So I am putting together wrong sides of both of these, and the outer perimeter will all be a raw hem. So, I'm lining up the hoods, I stitched that around the face hole first, and then I lined up the neck hole, and I'm tack stitching it, that way nothing scooches around, and then everything is all aligned where it should be as far as the hood and the neck. Once I got that all aligned, I now have to stretch out both pieces and start pinning around the entire perimeter. This was a little tricky on my table, so I spread it out on my floor, and here you can see a nice overview of the whole, how the whole look came together. If you look back at my pattern, it's cool to see that my pattern that I drew on a piece of paper is now a reality. So um, I, I've got it all pinned and flat and beautiful. I stitched around the perimeter, and now I'm trimming off the excess, leaving about a quarter inch of space. That way I can have that raw hem and have it fray over time and get nice and soft. To avoid having random little strings pulling off for a while, I went ahead and uh, used a fork and kind of roughed up the edges, pulled out any loose threads and trimmed them. That way it was nice and clean and then it could continue to fray and fluff on its own as it's being worn and washed. This way everything should uh, look nice and there won't be any weird long strings coming out. So it, it was a bit of a long process to do this whole perimeter, but definitely a small detail that would be well worth the quality uh, of the poncho and in the longevity of the poncho. I thought that it was very important for me to do this step. So no corners cut here. Gotta make sure that the, the, they say uh, the, the devil's in the details. <laughs> all right, so we got that all frayed. I am lint rolling it to get all the little pieces off of it. And she's finished. 
here is the final look. I really had a lot of fun with this project. It tested my abilities, it made me think outside the box, and it really came together quite nice. Uh, I was really happy with it, and the person that I made it for was absolutely over the moon in love with it, so that was really cool. Divine timing truly is real. Almost immediately once we got out to this forest to shoot these final shots, we crossed paths with the sweetest woman. She approached us, was asking about the poncho, and she was hyping me up, and she actually said she was a professional model coach in the past, and so she started giving me pointers, and I ended up staying throughout the whole shoot to, uh, to coach me and, and help me out with this, so shout out to her, she was super sweet, and uh, I was so thankful to have her there, she helped me out so much, and it was a, a really cute interaction, so here's a little sneak peek on, on her helping me out. Thank you. Super nice. Thank you. And it's reversible. Oh. Oh wow. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Oh, butterfly on the inside too. Yeah. Oh, Where did no. you get this? I made it. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting some happy. footage of the the final result. Oh, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. So what was the hood like when you put it up? Got little antennas on yeah, there. Yeah, I see that. Oh, that's so cute. With your head yeah. like coming out with that color, isn't uh -huh. it beautiful with that mm -hmm. green? Oh, thank you. Oh, it's adorable. Good for you. Do you want me to take a picture of the both of you together? Sure. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, I'm not professional. You just have to show me where to press. And beautiful, like she's perfect photogenic. My gosh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, Man, you're hyping me up for this photo shoot <laughs> we're about no, to do. No, <laughs> so you're doing a photo shoot with. Yeah, yeah, I recorded the process of how I made it, so I'm going to do like a time-lapse video, so we needed some footage of the I final result. I think we should spin around. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I used to teach modeling, that's why I say that. Oh, really? Oh my god, perfect. Years ago. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Now you show showing yes. That's good. Yeah, give that sexy pout. That's a nice <laughs> strong pose. No, it's really a good strong pose. And lean lean gently to one side. Yeah, lean. That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. Breathe in and remember that's right. And then just give that mysterious look as you look. Yes. 
that's beautiful mm -hmm. slowly keep turning with that look and then turn back again slowly yes yes oh my gosh this is beautiful yeah <laughs> that's kind of awkward okay. so do this do this stay like that stand straight okay and you know how you gave us that strong pose from the front yeah give us that same pose from the back put your hands out and up keep putting it yep 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 let's capture that that's perfect mm -hmm. okay now <laughs> We're definitely losing sunlight.